So this is a discussion of the scientific explanations for strand G, the testing the breaking strength of samples of polythene data analysis task. Okay, so <clears throat> it's important to bear in mind here what a hypothesis is, and that's that the strength of a sample of polythene bag depends on the width of the sample. And um, below is the science that's included in the OCR data sheet that you will have in your folder. Okay, so supermarket carrier bags often made from polythene. When the bags are full of shopping, they sometimes snap. Bags often snap at the handle because the handle is only a thin strip of plastic. Bag designers had to make sure the handle is wide enough to carry reasonable loads. Polythene is a polymer that contains long chain molecules. When polythene stretches, the long chain molecules slide past each other. Uh, one idea is that the strength of the bag depends on the number of long chain molecules in the sample of polythene. This may help to explain why manufacturers design bags with wider handles. Okay, so if you're trying to explain the science behind this hypothesis, then um, it's important to think about these things. So, the plastic bags are made from the polymer polythene, which is made of very long chain hydrocarbon molecules. That's in the description. Now, what's not in the description is the following things. How easy it is for these chains to slide past each other depends on the intermolecular forces between them. Okay, intermolecular forces, remember, are the forces between those long polymer molecules. Uh, and in the plastic bag, the first thing point to note is that the, the polymer chains are arranged kind of randomly like spaghetti rather than in very neat rows. And that makes the forces between the chains relatively weak. And so that means it doesn't take very much force to break strips of polythene. Okay. So that's just a general description of, of, of um, what's happening in our polythene bag. The important point for relating to the hypothesis is that if the strips are wider, then there are more polymer chains in the strip, and that means the force is going to be shared between more of the chains. So if you think about it, doubling the width um, of, the, of the strip should mean twice as many polymer molecules, okay? which should mean doubling the width of the strip should double the mass or force it takes to break it, because the force will be spread across twice as many molecules. So that's the key point. Number five is the key point in, in explaining the, the science here, which you should try and talk about. Um, a couple of other points to note. Useful to discuss other factors that could affect the strength of the polymer strips. Um, this is useful, obviously, for, for talking about your control variables as well. Um, you could add this in. Um, other things that can affect the strength, the type of polymer the strip is made from, it's made from something other than polythene, uh, then this could affect the strength of the intermolecular forces and therefore it could um, affect the strength of the strip. Um, even actually if you made it from a different type of polythene, if you, if you had polythene where the um, polymer molecules were arranged very neatly, uh, then that would tend to make it stronger as well. Uh, the thickness of the strips, as well as the width, obviously, will make a difference because this, again, will add more polymer chains to, to spread the force over. So if you hadn't controlled the thickness of the strips in your experiment, that could be a problem. Um, length of the strips may make a difference, so that probably wouldn't make much of a difference because you think about it that you're not spreading the force over any large number of polyth uh, polythene uh, molecules. It may just mean you're more likely to have a, um, a nick or, a, or a, some sort of tear in the strip if you've got a longer one, which would introduce a weak point. So that it, it could um, affect it that way. A final note, just to make, um, just to, so you're clear is that some of you may have recorded the load on your plastic strips during your experiment um, using grams, and some of you may have used newtons. So if you've recorded in grams, then we've recorded the mass that this hung from the strip. If you recorded in newtons, you've recorded the weight. It really doesn't matter for testing a hypothesis which one you've used. Because we can safely assume that this experiment is taking place on Earth, then Earth's gravitational field means that each 100 grams of mass provides one, newtons of, one newton of force. So um, increasing the mass will also increase the force in the bag. So you don't need to worry too much about um, whether you've written it in terms of mass or weight. It might just be worth going back through your experiment uh, right up and checking that if you've said mass, you write unit in grams, and if you've, if you've said weight, the units would be in newtons. Okay, that, that might be worth doing. So hopefully that should give you everything you need to explain um, your trend and your revised hypothesis for this experiment.